Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. Today, the day on which I upload this video, the 31st of October, is, as many of you probably know, Halloween. It's that time of year where witches are out and about, jack-o'-lanterns flicker and grin, and vampires stalk dark alleys. For me, it's always been a very creative and inspiring time of year, 2018 being no exception. Last year, I actually made a whole video series on my channel where I created various monsters during the whole month of October. It was a blast. Now, though I've drawn dozens of weird creatures for Inktober this year, I still really felt like doing a little extra something to celebrate Halloween. And so Sunday night, I decided I was going to try and create a small, spooky game. My deadline being the 31st of October, so that gave me roughly two to three days. So first of all, I had to decide what I wanted to create. Initially, I was set on making a scary-themed memory game. There would be a bunch of sickly-looking creatures staring at you, then the screen would flash red for a second and random things will have changed. It's then up to you to indicate what changed and what didn't, failing leading you to a gory, howling face. The concept wasn't that interesting though, it was really just a silly memory game. With one bad idea out of the way, I continued my Halloween game creation journey, and soon came up with this satisfying blood monster. It's basically just a bunch of circle sprites that move very fast towards this other red circle I've doped player, and that also back away from it when it gets too close. It looks pretty cool and juicy, but sadly I didn't have any game idea to go with it. At one point, I thought I wouldn't make a game at all, but instead create a large, interactable, scary character design poster, full of creatures and environment pieces you can click on, and that would make a cool little sound and play some animation. That idea led to another. What if I created a colourful, happy-looking picture, but that hides a darker, more sinister truth? And so I quickly drew three cartoony kids standing in a bright green field in Photoshop then lowered the opacity of that picture and drew a scary, darker, more monstrous version of those three characters and that same environment. I then exported those two sprites into Unity, drag and dropped them into the scene view, one on top of the other, and then I selected the dark version and chose for mask interaction, visible inside mask, and for the bright, happy version, I chose Visible Outside Mask. Then I created a sprite mask with a circle shape that follows the mouse cursor and that spawns other circular sprite masks that slowly scale down over time. The end result being an interesting, rather disturbing piece. Note that if you want to learn a lot more about how to use Unity's awesome sprite mask tool, I have a whole tutorial on the topic that is linked in the video's description. Anyway, I soon realized an entire little game could be built around this mechanic, instead of just a large character design poster. The player would have to navigate what seems to be a bright, colourful and happy looking world using some classic platformer controls, but he would also have the ability to see through that and lay eyes upon the dark and dangerous other side. And so I quickly sketched out the first level. There would be a bunch of flowers and a simple flashy pumpkin in the player's way, innocent and harmless. However, using his ability to see through that, the flowers will turn out to be vicious blood-red spikes, and the pumpkin also a deadly, spiky trap. Really excited to begin creating this world, I got cracking inside of Unity, and soon had a little player character hopping around a two-sided scene, one happy and safe, the other ominous and dangerous. I had a great time adding a few little details to this first level, such as a rain particle effect only visible inside of the sprite mask. I also created some simple spooky tombstones and a few skeletons underground. Once that first scene established and the core mechanics and interactions in place, I took a few moments to think about what levels and monsters I could create next. Here are some rough, ugly pictures I drew while brainstorming. Now of course, I would love if you played this tiny game before continuing to watch this video, since I'm about to spoil most of its contents. Anyway, I created mutilated corpses that offer you a few hints on the dangers that lie ahead, disturbing kids that will kill you if you get too close, a kind old granny that's in fact a hideous witch, a bunch of ugly blood-red monster birds, and more. 
This project was loads of fun to create. I just loved making a happy, bright version of a character or environment and then mutilating and transforming it into something monstrous and scary. Due to my fast approaching Halloween day deadline, I did rush a lot though, be that for the art and animations or the level design. I feel like this concept of two worlds, one visible, the other hidden, dark and dangerous, could be expanded, polished and really fleshed out in many ways. So I might take these ideas a bit further, I'll have to think about it. In the meantime, I would love to know what you think of this game concept in the comments. So with six small levels up and running, I began thinking of the story I could tell to make the whole experience a little more interesting. Doing some research, I found out that Halloween is in fact the time of year where the veil between the world of the living and that of the dead is at its thinnest. That worked great for my game, the character's ability being to simply see through that thin veil into the land of the dead. And so I created a few pictures to tell my little story. I also made another scene featuring loads of monsters that are crossing the bridge slash veil between the two worlds. And finally, the player destroys that unhealthy link and separates the undead spirits and monsters from the living. It was then time to make some sounds. Since I wasn't actually taking part in any official game jam and as a result there weren't any rules or restrictions to what I could use, I helped myself to a couple sound effects from YouTube's audio library, namely a couple spooky beats that would play when the player reveals a hidden monster or trap. Those definitely add to the scary atmosphere and hopefully will get the player feeling a bit on edge. I also created a few of my own sound effects using audacity, my voice and some objects I could find lying around my desk for some subtle footstep sounds as well as for various monsters in the game. <laughs> I then found a cool music online called Spirit of the Dead, which I feel fits the game really nicely. I really did hesitate adding the music at first. I was worried it would ruin the spooky atmosphere and stop the tension from building up, but without it the game felt too quiet. True, the jump scares had more of an impact, but other than that, the whole world just felt better with some eerie music, more alive and polished. And there we go, my mini horror game which I decided to call The Other Side was complete. As always, I learned a lot working on this small game. I was able to really get into my system that Halloween spooky vibe I like so much. Now, quite a few people have asked me why I don't work on a longer, bigger game project. And the reason is simple, I don't have any game concept or prototype just yet that I feel could be expanded on or that I wish to flesh out. However, I'm continuously creating, taking part in game jams and doodling down ideas, so it shouldn't be too long before I take that leap and decide to work on something big. I really feel the need to create something more substantial and complete than what I've done so far, build a world I could be really proud of and make it my first commercial game. I would love to share my journey with you while doing so, so expect a regular devlog series on the channel as soon as I have something worth digging into. With that said, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It would be amazing if you also consider supporting me via Patreon like these awesome people. Okay, happy Halloween everyone and stay tuned for plenty more game creation content. Cheers! Cheers.